Africa that for every 100 shillings that you are collecting, only 29 is left for counties to pay salaries, to do development. Mr. Speaker, it is a fact that not even a magician can work any miracle when you are handed over such an economy. But the question that we need to ask ourselves is, what has the president, what has this administration done? And I agree with him when he reports that this, this country is on a path of transformation because the first and the simple basic thing that he has done is to reduce on our fiscal deficit from an upwards of 8 to 9 percent to 5.4 in this current financial year, uh, Mr. Speaker. And I know for a fact, Mr. Speaker, that there is even a further supplementary budget which our colleagues in the other house are likely to debate tomorrow that is lowering that fiscal deficit, Mr. Speaker, to ensure that one, we live within our means, that two, Mr. Speaker, we are responsible in our borrowing. That three, and most importantly, we tell Kenyans the truth that for a long time, Mr. Speaker, we have lived a lie. Mr. Speaker, we are behaving like university or college students that I used to see in our university days, Mr. Speaker, where when they get help money, they want to buy all the flashiest of clothes, they want to buy the nicest of shoes, Mr. Speaker, then eventually when they arrive at the university, they cannot even afford food, and they are left begging. Mr. Speaker, that is the kind of economy that we have been running for so many years. That's why, Mr. Speaker, when we say that we must tighten our belt, that we must teach our people that you cannot enjoy better services, uh, Mr. Speaker, without having to pay a share of it, it is the truth and nothing can be done about it, Mr. Speaker. I know people, Mr. Speaker, want to play popular, want to play populist politics, Mr. Speaker, on this particular issue of uh, taxation, but we have to be realistic and tell ourselves what are the options that are left with us as a country. Default is not an option. There is no responsible administration that is going to default on its debts, Mr. Speaker, and look straight into the eye of its citizens and say, because we did not want to make you feel the burden, allow us to default, Mr. Speaker. We know what has happened to countries that have defaulted, uh, Mr. Speaker. Things will get even worse, but the president is simply telling the country that let me be a responsible father and tell you the hard facts that between you as the adult population today in the Republic of Kenya and the future generations, that is our children, our young people that are in schools feeling the pain of a country that has been uh, ravaged by debt, Mr. Speaker, we'd rather feel the pinch as a parent generation, Mr. Speaker, so that our children can inherit a sound economy, a country that is thriving, Mr. Speaker, a better nation than what uh, was handed over to us, Mr. Speaker. And I agree with the President on that particular uh, decision. Many a times, Mr. Speaker, people debate, people speak about these particular things. Oh, there's too much taxation. Cost of living is too high. It is, there is no assumption, Mr. Speaker. I know each and every part of the country is complaining about this particular issue. But the difference between us and our critics, Mr. Speaker, is that we are honest with our people, telling them that this is the cause, this is the reason why we are facing this particular situation, but there is hope in the hinterland, Mr. Speaker, that the things that we are doing today are for a better 2024, a better 2025, and an even more prosperous 2030s, Mr. Speaker. Otherwise, Mr. Speaker, if we decided to run a subsidized economy like our colleagues uh, were doing, Mr. Speaker, you will know for a fact that despite the fact, Mr. Speaker, that many people are speaking about the challenges in the fuel sector, for example, you know, Mr. Speaker, that at the time of the coming in of this administration, thanks to the fuel subsidy uh, program that was being run, this present financial year, Mr. Speaker, as we speak today, we are clearing a debt of close to 80 billion Kenya shillings, paying for previous fuel that Kenyans consumed, was not paid for, Mr. Speaker, but it passed and parcel of the bills that we are living today. Up to how long, Mr. Speaker? Senator Aaron, uh, do you want to be informed by Senator Eddie? Until, first of all, he learns, Mr. Speaker, how to seek, Mr. Speaker, the attention of the Speaker. That is, you know, Mr. Speaker, in this house you graduate and learn. If he has not known how to use the gadgets, Mr. Speaker, and is using the mouth instead, does he really merit to inform a majority leader, uh, Mr. Speaker? He has done it. He's done No, 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 no. Mr. He's Speaker, let me help you. There's an intervention. How you get the intervention of the Speaker is that you press and you wait. You don't shout, Mr. Speaker. That is a lesson that I'm, I want to pass on uh, to Senator Eddie. It's been rejected. Proceed, Senator uh, Aaron. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, sir, I don't mind being informed by Senator Eddie now that he has learned so long as he promised, yes, Mr. Speaker, not to be shouting at the Speaker, Mr. Speaker. But at the next opportunity, he must commit before informing me, Mr. Speaker, that he has learned the lesson of how to seek the attention of the Speaker.
So, proceed to inform uh, Senator Eddie. 